On vous parle maintenant du groupe punk rock californien Blink-182, des méchants talents qui ont passé l'année à se promener tout nu dans des vidéoclips. Mais vraiment, dans l'histoire de la musique, on va se souvenir d'eux de cette façon-là. Oui, c'est vrai, mais euh, j'ai l'impression que ben, je sais qu'ils sont déjà tannés de se promener tout nu. Je les ai rencontrés deux fois cette année, Blink-182, et ça a vraiment été une belle année pour eux. Leur album, Animal of the State, s'est vendu très, très bien. Et euh, on, ils étaient passés à, de passage à Montréal récemment, euh, la dernière fois que je les ai rencontrés, et on a fait un petit peu une rétrospective de la So I look good naked. I think that my penis isn't so much small as it is skinny. I like naked ladies. I think naked ladies are a gift from the man upstairs. Last time we talked, I don't know if you remember, you were here in June, I right. interviewed you guys, and uh, you hadn't really hit yet. It was nothing compared to what's going on now. Are you shocked at what's happened? We are always shocked that anybody likes our band, and uh, the fact that it's girls is even more shocking, because we think we're very ugly and gross. It's weird. Everything's weird. We used to play here so many times, and there wasn't all these people and everywhere else in the world, and things have gotten crazy, but you know what? It's fun, though. It's fun to be in a band and have people come to your shows and buy your records. It's nice. Hey, Mark, you know what time it is? It's time to uh, sing a song about jacking off. Sing a song about jacking off. Look at my hips. I'm like Elvis. Look at that shit. It goes like this. You know the amount of NASA engineering they have to do just to make our instruments and our voices sound good? It's a lot of work. There, in that little, in that little area out there, there's $150,000 worth of technology to try and make us sound like a decent band. You're totally and completely immature. This is the sort of image that you've cultivated. Do you ever get sick of it? The only thing that uh, that I don't like is that sometimes people don't take our music very seriously, although we do. I think our songs are pretty serious songs for the most part. The lyrics are pretty genuine and straightforward and very. Uh, they're almost serious lyrics, most of them are, and I'm totally sick of the naked thing. This is the deal. I mean, obviously, this is a business, and we have, uh, we've matured in many ways. I mean, we run our business. We, we're, we're very, uh, we try to make really wise decisions about uh, what songs we write and how we write them and how our albums are put out and how our image is is portrayed and everything we, we take all that really seriously but you know what our band has a lot of personality and we want kids to know that they can relate with us we want kids to know that that we are like them that there's other people out in the world that that feel the same feelings that they feel and uh, i think that's part of how we've gotten to where we are i'm out of shape i need to take a break and i need to have a blow job you mentioned um, kids, and I find this, I'm, I'm, I'm utterly amused by the fact that every time I, I read interviews with Blink, and I've seen interviews with Blink, and it's all about teenage angst and getting it out in high school, and just sort of, you're, you're like 27. No, yeah. he, he is. <laughs> I'm 27. I'm only 33, so it's not... Well, I, never, I never grew up or finished my development process since I was in high school. I, about how, you know, we have this theory that, that we were in high school, and then right when we got out of high school, we started writing songs about being in high school. And we haven't stopped doing that, so therefore we forgot that we never really had a period in our life where we had to be adults. Yeah, I've never had to act like a grown-up ever, and thank God for that. There's a double irony, you got to see it, with the video for all the small things. You're taking the piss out of boys' bands. Are you not a boys' band? We are not a boys' band. We are... There's, it's a totally different thing. I mean, I think that uh, that we that that's kind of crossing over just because the amount of MTV, Music Plus, much music uh, airplay that we've been getting with our video. And uh, but you know, honestly, uh, they come from a totally different place than we do. They are strictly performers. They sing and they dance and they look good. And you know, they don't. They look, they look really good. <laughs> if these kids that listen to these boy bands, if that's the style of music they like, and then they hear our band and they go, wow, and they like our band. I feel like I have just done a justice for all. I feel like I have helped out society to get people listening to something other than pop music. And it's not that pop music is bad, it's just that it sucks. And, uh, <laughs> no, you know, it's almost uncool to make fun of pop music because everyone does. We, uh, we did it way before anybody else did it. It was cool when we made fun of pop music. <laughs> we are stupid. We're not a boy band. How could you think we're a boy band? We talk about eating your own poop and masturbating your 
dad. <laughs> we'll say the worst, grossest things ever just to get a shock out of people. Hey, are you guys ready to have orgasms? All right, here we go. I have yet to have sex with someone's mom. I don't think I've ever had sex with a mother. I've never had sex with a mother. That would be fun. As long as the kid is there, too. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, no, I don't know. I just thought about that. I just had a... All right. Hold just on. came to you. It. Wait, hold on a second. I'm thinking about it right now. Done? Okay, I'm done. <laughs> the funny thing is, is long before anybody even gave us a minute of their time, Mark and I would cruise around the town with our skateboards and try and shock and offend people and make people just go, oh my god, those guys are complete assholes. And uh, now we've just taken it to a different level. Now there's lots of people listening because... Now we do it on television and on stage. We are so fucking punk. Uh, we've never really concerned ourselves with what lies ahead in the future. We've always just worked as hard as we could and toured as much as we could. And, you know, if it is fleeting, then at least we got the chance to do this for a few years and we're very happy about that. Yeah. We know it's all going to be gone sometime. I mean, the, the reality is, is that Mark and Travis will not be recognized for their art <laughs> in like a year or two. And I will stick around and do, like we said, some instructional guitar solo videos that will probably sell multi-billions. No, who knows? We just, you know, we've always done the same thing. And uh, I just think we've gotten better at doing it. And hopefully it's a style of music that kids like and want to be a part of for years to come. <laughs> Excuse the fuck me! Information is free. There is hope. What's in your pockets, quick? A laminate. A laminate and a key to the bus. And one dollar. I've seen the entrevue of Ascar, so I'm going to say a half of weed in front of bar. Okay. I have a note here that says, this is where the band Silver Chair was staying last night. And we told everybody, we told 10,000 people their name and their room number. American money. Canadian money is useful. Lighter. Smoker? Smoker. Big smoker? Big smoker. Un portefeuille. La clé de mon style. And you smoke menthol? Menthol. Menthol. See what else I can whip up here? Pen? Okay. Oh, Canadian. I see you brought back something from home from your trip to Canada. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is mine forever. I'm going to flame it. That's it. Sinon, ça va tomber. Même pas de clé de maison. Non. C'est jamais barré chez moi. Comment ça? C'est jamais barré chez moi. What do you have in your pockets? I don't have any pockets. I carry everything in my bag. And absolutely everything. I mean, just name it, it's in my bag. 